Hey again, it's Heather the Painter here, and I currently have Jack at my feet chewing a bone, so you may hear him making some noises. And he is making sure that I tell you guys all the really cool features about these new brushes that I created for Corel Painter 2016. In the first video, I showed you how to use the two signature brushes. Uh, one was the brush, one was the grainy. Um, I'm going to make sure I save this. Jack Word, let me put Jack the Painter. Uncompressed Photoshop. And then we are going to open up a new document. I've got a, um, an image. I wanted to show you the different blender brushes that are in the blenders pack. So there are six brushes in the sketchy blenders. I should take that back. There's actually seven brushes in the sketchy blenders. Um, these brushes have very, very different looks from each other. And I want to go through those with you. So the first thing I do want to set is my paper under my um, tools palette, paper texture, and I always typically set it to artist canvas, just in case anything with a little bit of grain shows it. So we're gonna start at the top one, our chunky blobby blender one. You'll see it's kind of this weird squished shape. And this one, I'm gonna make a little bit larger. And that shortcut to quickly resize your brush is command option and draw a circle. On a PC, it is Control Alt and draw a circle. Now, the larger you draw your brush, the more drain it's going to be on your computer, so you'll notice a lag. So, just to show you what this brush does, it adds a little paper texture, it makes it a little greasy, and it just kind of mushes it around like a sponge painting. So, this is really good on larger areas. Uh, it doesn't matter where I am on my color wheel because this brush is just simply going to grab and drag. Now, I'm at a pretty light opacity, so I'm not getting that much action here. You can see my opacity is at 50. If I boost this to 100, we're going to have a much more aggressive or heavily coverage brush. I hope that's a technical term, the heavily coverage. So you can see now it's smushing a lot more. So this brush is really awesome on areas like clouds or seascapes, um, empty spaces. It just gives you really nice um, sponged modeled look, like sponge painting. But it also brings up a little bit of paper texture. So I probably would not use this on skin, but big background spaces, it does a very nice job on. Now if this is too heavy, we can dial down our opacity. Let's go back to 30. And it would be a very, very soft modeled appearance, modeled with two T's. Here we go. Now, if I go to my Chunky Sargent Blender, this is one of my favorite brushes that I adapted from Corel's original Sargent brush, and I made it a blender. So this brush is really cool as a dried, crusty old palette knife. And this one has been featured, an older version of it, in some of my tutorial training materials. Um, and it's been such a favorite brush, I thought I'd kind of re-update it for Painter 2016. Now, it should be mentioned here that this brush is only, or this packet of brushes, is only compatible for a Corel Painter 2016, and they're not backwards compatible. So make sure you don't load them in an earlier version, as you may see some error messages pop up. So this brush is just really, really cool. It's like taking just a dried palette knife. Again, I probably wouldn't use it on skin as much. Um, for my style, I just it doesn't work for me. I'm gonna undo that. But on background space, on hair, on clothing, I'll make it a little smaller. And it is up at 60% opacity, so that means it's gonna be a very heavy brush. If we want it to be very subtle, we can drop that opacity down. Let's go to like 20. And you see how much more tame it is now? It's just having a little tiny bit of a drag. So we can always alter or adjust to these brushes um, and make them less aggressive by dropping our opacity. So that is a Chunky Sargent Blender. I'm going to go over to the Dirty Filbert Blender, which is one of my absolute new favorite brushes. Oops, let me blend that out. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and show you over here. It is the equivalent of taking a Filbert brush in the traditional world, and it's a little aggressive, but it takes a lot of back and forth, like squeegee motions. 
It's very, very expressive. And again, since all of these are blenders, we're not actually putting down color. We're just simply blending whatever pixels it lands on. So this is really good for chopping up edges. It's a nice, heavy, flat brush, which gives us a much heavier style of interpretation. It's not super photorealistic. I'm going to try it in this pigtail. It's also really nice if you are drawing uh, figure studies and you need just a little bit of blend because it's not a super clean brush. Uh, so it does have some, I guess, a little bit of erratic behavior, which is really nice when you're in that sketching world. The companion brush I use with this is the Wispy Blender, which is one of my probably all-time favorite blenders ever. Let me reset that. There we go. This brush I'll show you across her face. See how cool that is? That just reminds me of a very light, fluffy brush with something like turpentine or water or thinner. It's just a really nice wispy brush. So I typically pair this dirty filbert blender with the wispy because it gives me those nice edges. So it's just kind of finishing those brush marks for me. There we go. Get a really cool look with these especially here on the bangs just kind of ethereal graceful swoopy if you're familiar with my other tutorials you'll hear swoopy a lot just a really cool blender now if you order the full pack of signature and sketching brushes you actually have this brush is a color brush but we're just demoing the blender pack for now so I went a little bit overboard. Okay, so I skipped one. I've got the Greasy Heavy Blender. This one's totally different. It almost has kind of a greasy, hardened bristle look. So you can see it's not flat. It's not blending very nicely. It's just a little bit more aggressive. So this will give you a completely different style of brush stroke. It's just very, very aggressive, but you get a lot of coverage with it. It's nice and separated. Now, if this is too harsh, we can either uh, pair it with that wispy blender. So pair it, put a little wispy over top. Whoops, make sure I get the wispy. So he, see how nicely that wispy just finishes it off? Or if we go back to that greasy heavy blender, we can dial down that opacity even further. So this brush is naturally a very aggressive brush. And even if I make light brush marks, I'm trying to make really, really light strokes. I don't know if you can see the difference. It will give it a lighter, thinner appearance. So if I go light, we get this. If I go heavy, you see how large that brush gets. So all of these brushes are very sensitive to this brush calibration. And finish the edge. So we've got really different looking pigtails. This one's a little bit streakier, a little bit more dramatic. This one's a lot softer. It looks like there's a little bit of turpentine or thinner used in a brush if we were painting in the real world. Okay, so next one we've got just a little grease blender. This one is just like the name implies. It adds just a little bit of grease and lets you blend. So this one I'd probably use on clouds or large areas. It's a little rougher on skin. I'm not so, I don't really jump with this one on skin, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to show you. It's not a perfect circle. It's not a perfect shape. It's not super modeled, but it gives you almost like, I don't know, kind of like a slightly chunky pastel look. But I find I really like this one in larger spaces or like the background, we've got all this greenery. So you can see it looks like just a little bit of grease, hence the name. And we could dial this up. Right now the opacity is only at 20, so if we take that up to 100, we see it gets a little bit more separated. So I probably would not jump too high with this one. Let's go back down to 20. 
With this brush build, the higher your opacity, the more it separates the brush, I guess, dabs. So it might look a little bit too digital with the higher numbers, but you get kind of like that uh, pastel slightly, you know, add a little bit of um, oil or watercolor to it. So I would see this really as either large areas or you can get that nice uh, watercolor edge look if we were just to diffuse the edges. Here we go. Very, very different look. Now we have this really cool one. This is just add alcohol and salt smoosher. This one is if you added a little bit of alcohol to a traditional painting. And what that does is gives it this weird separated look. So you can get a really neat effect. And the more you go over an area, the more it keeps trying to separate it. Come over here on the painted brush edges. So it's a different texture being introduced into the piece. Now, if you ever wanted to paint over top, you could. This texture is not permanent. We could just take that wispy blender and paint over it again. But it creates a really interesting uh, texture layering if you want to have different layers of texture showing through your painting, which is really key if you want it to look more organic and less digital. So that is all the new blenders from the Sketchy Blenders Pack. And you can see we've got a lot of different variation here. Now they come in the full pack or they come with just the small sketchy pack. And those can be found at www.heatherthepainterstore.com.